Hi subscribers, what's up? It's me, Wivs from Slidener here. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how to parse an RSS feed using XML DOM API. Pretty since the last two videos, I was talking about XML DOM parsing its methods, its interfaces, and other stuff. All work and no play makes Zach a dull boy. It's time to start playing with whatever we have learned. So, I'm taking TechCrunch and I'm taking its Android RSS feed, which is a pretty complex feed because it has a title, it has an image, and it has some description, and we are gonna see exactly how to get all this data inside our app. So, let's take a look at the structure of XML that we have here. If you notice, this is what typically an RSS feed looks like. This is way too complex than a simple feed that you guys see most of the times. But then that's exactly the fun and what we have is nothing great but item tags all over the place. Take a look at this. There's an opening item tag here, then there's a closing item tag within which all the data for one article is present like title, link, comments, publish date, creator name, there is some description stuff, there are some comment stuff, there's thumbnail information, media related information and so much inside one single item like that. What we have is 40 items if you notice here at the top which is nothing but 40 opening and closing included which means there are 20 complete items within this feed which we are gonna publish or display inside our app. So going back to our Eclipse I have nothing great, no layouts, nothing created. Just now I have started working on our main activity. The first thing that we want to do is create an async task where we are gonna perform all this reading operations. So let me go ahead and make one here. So here I have my TechCrunch task that extends async task. All the parameters are void because I will worry about them later. Now there's our placeholder fragment. Now if you guys have seen the video about a rotation proof async task, that's exactly what I plan to do here. So I'm gonna go here to on activity created and I'm gonna make this instance retained by saying set retain instance true over here. So that takes care of making sure that this fragment is never destroyed. Now inside our activity which is main activity there's our on create. Now notice one more thing this fragment placeholder fragment does not have a UI because I have not overridden on create view anywhere and that's exactly the kind of fragment I need for making sure that this task works perfectly with the main activity. So first I'm gonna create the placeholder fragments reference here I'm gonna call it task fragment here and I'm gonna go here initialize it. Now initializing is again a little tricky now if you remember I have a if else statement here which says if saved instance state is null or else. Now if saved instance state is null when does that happen? It happens when the first time your main activity is started. So this is the time and I want to initialize this by saying task fragment equals to new placeholder fragment over here. Also what I want to do is add this fragment to our fragment transaction. In other words I will get our support fragment manager here and I'm gonna begin a transaction here that is a fragment transaction I'm gonna see add over here and I'm gonna add this task fragment object now since this does not have a UI I will use a string name and I will call it my fragment over here and I'm of course commit the transaction now if you guys don't know what fragment transactions are please check my fragments playlist where I've talked about them unlike any video you guys have ever seen on YouTube so going back here what I want to do if it's not the first time then what remember the first time we actually created a fragment and we got our fragment manager we began a transaction we saved that fragment object here to that transaction so the subsequent time we can directly find it by saying get support fragment manager dot find fragment by tag over here and we can give the same tag which we used to store earlier which is my fragment here and of course that will be equal to task fragment of course we gotta perform the type casting here and that takes care of that so this makes sure that our placeholder fragment is retained perfectly and it's always there within our main activity now the next thing that we need to do is go inside our placeholder fragment and create our task which is our tech crunch task download task over here and what I want to do is make a method here called start task. I'm going to say public void start task over here. For now we will not worry about what parameters this method takes but we will worry about one thing. What if the download task is not null? So let's go here and take a look at that. If download task is not equal to null then please cancel that download task. I'm going to say download task dot cancel and interrupt it even if it's working because we are canceling it and we don't care if the results matter or not. Otherwise, 
what you gotta do is directly start the task which means make the task if it is not null so in this case I'm gonna say download task is new TechCrunch task over here and I can directly start that by saying download task dot execute over here and I don't need to pass any parameters so the first time you want to start a task you'll have to do it through the placeholder fragment which is our task fragment you can go here and you can say task fragment dot start task and that will make sure that we have a nice task running here enough with the stuff over here let's take a look at the do in background method and how we are going to connect to our URL over here so the first thing that we know need is this particular exact URL over here which is feeds.feedburner.com TechCrunch Android format so let me take this URL over here exactly as it is and let's go back here to our Eclipse here inside the doing background I need to perform all our network operations so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say string download URL equals to this and of course don't forget to add your HTTP stuff here so I'm gonna say HTTP and slash slash over there now the next thing that we need is a URL object which represents this URL if you guys remember in Java what we have is a URL object which is java.net and we're gonna say URL equals to new so here we use the constructor of the URL class which takes a string spec or domain name inside so here I'm gonna put download URL inside this now at this point there may be an error because the URL may be improper so we gotta make sure that we have a try catch surrounded with this so if any exception arises let's make it any exception by making it general over here as exception and then we'll simply print that exception out now for printing stuff we will need a log but I don't use log in my videos you know very well what I use instead let me go and paste so here I pasted my class L which has this static method M which takes a string message and says log.d wives and message so let's use that here by saying L.m over here and just print the exception out if something goes wrong now the next thing that we need to do is open a connection to that URL so I'm gonna say URL dot open connection this is gonna be a HTTP URL connection in our case over here so HTTP URL connection make sure you perform the type casting and that takes care of that now the next thing that we need to do is set the type of request that we want so I'm gonna say connection dot set request method here and that is gonna be our get request that we want next thing is to open or get the input stream by saying connection dot get input stream this is gonna give us the input stream object from which we can read the data over here of course we need to import this class which is java dot io dot input stream and that takes care of that now the next thing that we need to do is start reading the XML document because at this point we have the connection we have opened it the only thing that we need to do is start reading or start parsing the XML document so let's make a separate method that does all the XML work so I'm gonna say public void process XML something like that so inside this method public void process XML the first thing I'm gonna do is use our XML DOM API's that is create a document builder factory by saying document builder factory equals to document builder factory dot new instance now remember you cannot use a constructor like new document builder factory because this is a singleton class in other words there's only one object that exists for this type of class so go here document builder factory dot new document builder this is gonna give you a document builder object here now of course there are chances that you guys document builder factory so add a uh, exception stuff so let's have a throws exception at the top of this stuff so that we don't worry about taking care of exceptions now the next thing that we need is a document builder dot parse now this is the part where we start reading our XML document if you guys notice there's document builder dot parse there are there's a parse for a file parse for an input source parse for an input stream now if you guys remember at the top we already have an input stream that we can read data from so let's take that input stream inside this method by saying input stream input stream here and simply say document builder or parse input stream here this is gonna give us a document XML document here import the document now make sure it's org.w3c.dom here go to the do in background method here and simply call our process XML method here and pass this input stream in other words get this input stream read the data from it 
and parse that data to build our DOM tree. If you guys remember the first step, that our the data is read and the DOM tree is constructed. So now let's take a look at what we can do with this. Now to show you that things worked so far, let me just give you a small test here. I'm going to say XML document dot get document element. Now if you guys remember, document element is the root element that we have for our XML documents. Here I'll make it element root element and of course I need to import this which is again org.w3c.dom.element whatever. Now I'm going to just print this by saying l.m here. And I'm gonna say root element dot get tag name over here. This will show you guys that this code is actually working. So first thing that we need to do is go to manifest and add our permission for using the internet. I'm gonna say uses permission here and make sure that it is Android dot permission. So the internet permission has been added. Going back to main activity, we have our task which has been started. And there you go, there's our placeholder fragment, there's a start task method that's gonna make our new task execute. From the execute which is called do in background, we have the connection being opened, the input stream being retrieved and we are processing the XML for that input stream and we are trying to print the root element inside that. So let's take a look at this, run this, there is no particular UI as of now, but then you guys will get the rough idea. So at this point our code runs and it prints RSS as the name of the root element. Let's go back to our Google Chrome and confirm this. If you guys go to the top here and if you try to take a look XML, this is our root element RSS which was printed which means the parsing is working perfectly. So in the next video we are going to go further dig into this document and we are going to try to extract the data from each item. In the meantime if you guys do like what you saw, please like this video. Share this video, subscribe to SlideNode and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you guys in the next video, have a nice day.